long time for me to do. But before we do anything else whatsoever, first thing is first is to inspect each and every battery. Make sure there are no peels, make sure there are no tears. Of course, make sure there's a wrap. Make sure it's not corroded. Make sure it's not rusting. If any of these conditions exist on the lithium ions, uh, you will want to follow the directions as seen here. At least this door does, so. And uh, never use cells made for bakes and laptop batteries and vice versa. Very, very important. And uh, always read your safety. And if you do that, this one right here at the bottom, yeah, I, I can't help you. But yes, we'll make sure you read and understand these before you do anything. And uh, just like purchasing insurance, you got one of these, ready to go, and a uh, bucket of sand just in case. In fact, we shouldn't have to use them, but just be sure that they are ready should anything go wrong. But if you're responsible and provided the cells are not damaged, it should be fine. Now we're going to talk about documentation. And I have taken pictures of this before disassembly, and I'm also in addition to it right now. And look at that, Apple actually can use wire on things. I believe this is not one that requires constant power to keep going, but I don't know. We'll see how much of a mistake this is, but there we go. We'll get that thermostat out of the way right away, because underneath is one of the wires you'll have to disconnect. And that can be done with an ordinary soldering iron. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to slowly take this thing apart. And maybe we'll do intermittent, intermediate checkups to see how process is going. So, here you go. We will, uh, I will start getting to work on this right now. At this point, the DMS module has been since, dis has been since disconnected. And it does, in theory, if we go do it like so, this is a pretty straightforward build. We got three, we got this one-ish, this is where the wire would go, and then we got another pair of three and some poor camera work. And you'll notice that, I'll take this sticker stuff off, the fish paper, and let's double check, make sure. Actually, you know what? I am going to be right back. I'm gonna get that off, and then we'll see what we got underneath. All right, not quite what I expected, but perfectly fine anyway. So here, you have a set of three, all one, and then this nickel strip will go into six. And this one's kind of in an island on its own. And then, then you have another strip of five that match up like this. And then you have a strip of three. So, I guess that's where I'm going to get started. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so the nickel strip kind of got away from me on this one. So, uh, yeah, so it kind of got tucked in underneath here. That's exactly why you got to be careful. But we caught it. And uh, no harm, no foul. I'll just set that one off to the side. We are now mostly together. Uh, save for like where wires would go, those tabs need to be attached yet, but beyond that, uh, it does appear that we are getting somewhere, so we'll go on to our next step. Starting to come together here, uh, though it still kind of looks like a mess. I did do some extra taping uh, while I do assemble this uh, to make sure nothing does short out. Otherwise, we may have something even worse than this, and we may have to utilize that. So, we'll continue. I think I have two positive leads I have to attach yet, or one of each. I'm not exactly sure yet, but... Yeah, I got one negative and one positive, it looks like, so I will get that done right now. Alright, starting to take hold now. Now to the point where we get the soldering iron back out, and uh, hopefully, in theory, we can attach some of these. Now, it's starting to get dark outside, so I brought her into the garage, and... It's mostly together. If I press the little indicator, uh, there is signs of life. So, uh, first initial thoughts is this is better than the Compact Armada battery that I attempted last year, which I suspected had 
other issues with the MS itself. But we'll see how this one goes, and we'll go from there. We are mostly back together now. There is some tape sticking out, and it's some pieces. That it's, it's raised up a little bit, but I think I feel more optimistic about this one than I did uh, previous uh, builds. So let's uh, get this thing in a computer, and let's see what we can do. Well, I have an interesting problem with the computer. Try to move the cursor, and you can see it just keeps going to the left. But I don't think it's going to stop us from doing our little test here. So I am going to unplug the power from the computer, and I'm going to try to do this as safely as possible. Look at that. Now we're cooking. Not literally, but that is a success, I, I believe. I'm going to charge it a little bit more. All right, so the video got cut off there. I'm going to leave it charging a little bit more under supervision. And we do got a blinking light. Although the battery itself does fit tightly, it did fit. So I think I just have some fine tuning to do. And once we do that fine tuning, I think we'll be okay. But, you know, until then, uh, we will come back to this and uh, once it's fully charged, and I will uh, give you the results from there. And I am very thankful that this isn't one of those BMS modules that had to be had power connected the whole time while you were doing this. That, so that much we do know. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna charge this a little bit more at a later time and uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, I do apologize for the noise. This is definitely in the server room. You'll also notice that, uh, well, I do apologize for the noise. I do have more equipment going than usual. Um, I got a customer Fortinet here and I had to, uh, get this uh, Cisco 3560G that I've been using uh, as a shelf, had to reuse that for configuring this guy. But uh, as you can tell, we are starting to charge, or at least so it seems. It does say charging. You also will notice that I'm on a Dell monitor. The computer I was using all of a sudden does not want to do anything with a battery of any sort. So I present to you some of the mess. Just kidding. <laughs> I had to go buy a different power book. A nice uh, gentleman over in uh, Sister Bay, I believe, and uh, paid more than probably wanted to for it, but nah, that's that's the price of doing business with Apple. But uh, we got charging LED, and uh, yeah. And that uh, current battery charge number is going up, so yeah. Time will tell, we'll wait and see. All right, we are almost charged. And just for the sake of things here, I am going to go ahead and unplug it and see what we can get. We're on. This is not a drill. We are working 100% of battery. 100%. Let me take a picture of that. I don't know what the run time is going to be on this, but that's looking darn good right now. So I think uh, unless I get anything unusual here, I think I'm going to end the video pretty much right here. Let me show you what I did to get this back up and running. You see, lithium batteries all lithium batteries in existence, they have this, uh, they have a board on them. Uh, it's a BMS for short. I think it's called battery modular system or module system or something like that. I, I don't know what the technical term is, but on lithium batteries, you have to sometimes reset them or re-jump them. So in my case, you have to, you have to identify what the positive post is because a lot, most batteries you can uh, wake back up by jumping a wire from the positive on the battery to the positive I just took the pin that was closest to us here on our connector because that uh, so happened to be the positive on the Pismo it actually is identified that way so uh, let's see where we at here yeah if we were to put this cover back on yeah so you would see the positive is right there so I yeah I took this piece of tape off found the positive lead and then jumped it right to the battery and just did that for a couple seconds and 
here we are. So I have no idea what's going to happen with this battery beyond that, so I will test it out from there. So, oh, we're on. Okay, uh, we'll test it out. Uh, then we can finish this video off. I'm so happy about that. Yes, and I know the screen is jacked up, but you can tell we're running on battery. Well, it's not good news, unfortunately. Um, I don't think it's anything I did wrong or anything of that sort. Um, the first battery charge and recharge cycle went perfectly fine. I got about three hours of battery life out of the rebuilt. It charged okay. I left it overnight. And this morning, I come back to this. Despite the notable... Oh, here. This thing's got a full charge. And this sucker will absolutely not do anything with it now. So I don't know what happened. Uh, I did change the... Uh, and this battery shows a full charge. I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know that I did anything wrong. But it's uh, not so good here. So it is what it is. Hopefully it's just a bad cap or something on the DC board or something that's causing this. Uh, these are old computers, so it is very possible. It's just a little bit annoyed that all three of my PowerBook G3s do this now. So, it is what it is, uh, but uh, you can expect about three hours if you rebuild with the cells I use. So, that's going to be it for now. If you have any questions or comments or constructive criticism, please feel free to leave it in the comments section. If you can fix this problem and get this battery back to charging again, even better. So... Thank you for watching.